All right. Um, I, I was uh, given this uh, screwdriver uh, handle driver by, uh, and it was made by a friend of mine, Kim Malmberg in Finland. And uh, there's nothing particularly spectacular about this tool other than it's got such a beautiful handle that he made for me. It's just a really special tool. I really like that. Um, since he bought me that, I got some nice uh, Festool uh, drivers that, uh, screwdrivers that work really great in it. Um, only thing I wish I had was more uh, uh, flat-headed screw drivers, which I prefer. The problem with those is, is they're hard to find in Spain. So we're at that living here somewhere. What else we got? Alright, oh, Kim also made me this, uh, 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 got this wonderful old uh, uh, Rosenfors uh, uh, Swedish chisel and uh, made this really nice uh, handle for it. The only problem with it is that with my chest it's just a little bit too long to fit in here and, and the, um, the lid doesn't close when I have it in my and my tool rack here, no matter where I put it. So what I've been liking to do with this is just sitting it back here and trying to keep the blade somewhere where I'm, it's not going to bite me when I'm rattling around in there with my with my fingers. All right, so I got this cool little um, tiny little hammer. It's got a uh, number on it that says something like oh maybe it doesn't. Oh yeah, that's 50, 50 gram hammer. It makes a really nice little plane adjusting hammer. Um, that fits really nice in there. Uh, I got a couple of uh, dividers. Um, <laughs> dividers are great. These are uh, uh, some vintage ones I got today in Germany. And I found it. I haven't quite figured out the best way put these in here yet. I'm probably going to make a special little tool rack for these. We'll see how those, how that works. A um, couple more chisels from Kim. He, he put the handle on this one and this is uh, just a regular Swedish chisel of some kind. I'll we'll throw them back here somewhere. And uh, it's great having uh, chisels uh, where I don't have to get them out of a tool roll or out of a, a rack or something somewhere. I can put them in here, they stay sharp, and uh, <clears throat> this is a really fantastic way. You notice I only got three chisels, a big one, a medium one, and a little one. Honestly, that's all you really need. Um, I like chisels, I got a whole bunch more at home. I've got a box, a uh, bucket full of, of uh, vintage Swedish chisels, but uh, I find that uh, just having a couple of them sharp and ready to go in your tool chest, that's all that, that, all that you really need. Um, I have a couple of uh, Veritas uh, marking gauges. I really like this one. I don't know that you can get it anymore. But they both work just fine. Um, I have a uh, a Swedish uh, Mora knife. This is a vintage one. It's really, it's really great having a, uh, a shop knife. I never realized how much I used it until I had one. But believe it or not, this fits in there. It's really nice too. Just, uh, it works great. Um, there's a scratch hole. Oh, I got a, uh, a Japanese um, uh, flush cut saw, and I found that if I leave that in the case, that's a really nice way to uh, to hold it. And with the with the case on there, it fits really nice. Living in that rack too. Um, finally, I got uh, my um, stare at six inch square. Let's see. Let's I made this, uh, these openings 9 16 inch wide and it doesn't quite hold my square there but if I put it over the top of one of my uh, spacer blocks it, it fits just really nice in there and works good. Um, I have a, um, a poly straw from uh, Don Williams and I put this nail back here and it's just a really nice place to, uh, to hang that thing. 
and also uh, this little homemade uh, marking gauge I made with a hawk iron uh, goes on that nail. That's what it's really for. This thing doesn't really fit in here because it's um, it fits in here really nice this way, but I don't want to have the sharp blade up. That's just asking for trouble. So what I did is I uh, put a nail in here. <laughs> I knew I left that little uh, hole on the end of it out there for a reason. Um, but if it turns out that I can hang it off that nail and uh, protects the blade and it, uh, in there really nice. Probably make something else to hang that uh, that thingy off with. So. That's the inside of the chest. And uh, here you can see how I have these set up. And there's a little spacer to keep this uh, plane away from the front of the chest. And it keeps those, uh, those holes for these things to go in. All right, now for the top section. Um, let me see if I can show you a little bit of closer view of what I got here. And I made this, I put these uh, things on here and uh, after I got everything mounted I realized they weren't quite thick enough so I added some little spacers in the back. Which gave me a little bit extra room which makes everything fit nice and nice and neat. It looks kind of weird but actually that has an uh, little side benefit I didn't think about. There's some more tools that can go in here, so I'm going to show you how that works. So, uh, Alright, so, first up, i got some little gizmos here, including my uh, Sterling Toolworks uh, Protractor, which is just a, I really like this tool. But it turns out that this fits in here just about right. And I can turn it and Tighten it up a little bit and uh, fits in there in a way that it can't come out. <laughs> and uh, similarly, I got a handful of card scrapers here that uh, I really like to use these. There's some different uh, thicknesses and shapes of them. And believe it or not, they all fit in together in one of these things. Might. Uh, do a little bit more work to, to keep those in there. And last of all, I also got uh, some little uh, sandpaper sheets that uh, I like to use every once in a while. I don't use a lot of sandpaper, but uh, when you do, it's nice to have some good stuff. And I found that those fit in here too, and they're not sticking together. These are Abranet, also given to me by Fabulous Mr. Kim. Got some fine ones over there, and those are some uh, more coarser ones. And that's just perfectly fine for holding all that stuff, and it keeps it away from my saws and uh, everything else, and doesn't interfere with everything. And it's actually pretty easy to get out, even without removing any of the saws. All right. Next, I got this uh, this bow saw that I made. Actually made it in a class with uh, Christopher Schwartz in, uh, in Germany a couple years ago. It's a Gramercy uh, kit. It's got the little Gramercy hardware on it, and that thing works just great. And uh, it's easy to get here, so um, it showed up, and I found myself using it a little bit. And that just slides in there, and I have these two little toggles that keep it secure. I noticed that it should be it should be kind of loose, and this is kind of hanging here too. But uh, I put my my other saw, which is the infamous Dick saw, <laughs> which is a uh, Gaiochukos uh, Gaiochucho, however you say it, saw from Dictum, which is uh, just, just a fabulous saw. I use this thing for breaking down rough stock, uh, as well as things as fine as joinery like uh, dovetails and stuff. And uh, at the moment. Um, that's the only saw I have, so uh, that's why I don't have a saw till in the, in the rack. Um, but it goes in here pretty neat. I cut a little slot in this side, just like a western saw. It sits in there and that little thing closes shut over the top of that. 
and voila, that's it. Everything sits in there real nice. Oops, it looks like something's in the way of keeping this from closing. Be. There we go. And that's it for my tool test.